Okay, part two. Now we're going to address um, Psalm 33. But before we do that, there's this concept that there's a verse that says Elohim, Yahuwah is the Elohim of the living, not the dead. It's like, where's that found? Well, it turns what? out it's in Matthew 22, 32, parallel Mark 12, 27, and Luke 20, 34. But then in Romans 14, 9, it says, but Yahushua is the Elohim of both the living and the dead. It's like, what? Wait a minute. So there's this concept of the Elohim of the living, but not the dead. Is that anywhere in the Torah? Well, Deuteronomy 5, 29 to 30. That's why we read that. How do you live? How, if he's your Elohim, you better be doing what he said, Zadivav. Walking halakha on his derek, asher, just like Zadivav, he said. Which means if you're not shamaring to Oshe, Ose, I and Sheen, hey, what he Zadivavd, he's not your Elohim. And even though you think you chose life and entered his kingdom, You haven't, and you're still of the dead. So what you need to do is change your mind and change your heart to cross over from death to life and say, I want to walk in your ways. I want to do what you said. What are your ways? That is mitzvah. And so the next mem noon the labor, take it to heart, change your heart, desire to be craving his seed within your womb. The picture, the metaphor, picture of the Mishkan pattern here. Yeshua said the seed of Yahweh is his words. Let the words of his mouth take heart within you, within you. But you have to receive that. You have to have a mind for that. You have to have that desire. You have to not only choose life, but then desire his life essence. And so in Jeremiah 31, where he says, I'm going to put my ruach in you and you will want to walk in my ways. Then if you notice by self, what's called introspection, observing yourself that you don't really want to walk in his ways because you don't have to, because Jesus died on the cross, or because he nailed the, the law to the cross, or because of any reason, any reason, whether it's the right or left, whether it's because there's a consciousness of doctrine, or you had a personal epiphany, anything that gives you the allowance to not walk in his ways, and you're happy about that, it's not his ruach, it's not his spirit, it's not his breath. Ruach, spirit, mind, breath, will, essence. It's not him. It's a different God. Very disturbing concept. And if he's not your Elohim, he can't hear your prayers and you'll be left alone in your own natural condition. Aleph Yod Bet, like Esau, only it's translated hostile, enmity, grudge, malice, with attitude. It might just mean, I, I can't give you what I want to give you. I can't give you what I would give you. Just like you won't walk in my ways and listen to my voice. Whew. Okay, Psalms 33. So the interesting thing about Psalm 33, so, so over the last few weeks, couple of years, we've addressed numerous words. And the interesting thing is the vocabulary list of what's in the scripture isn't really that big. So the idea of going back over these words and the prefixes and the suffixes, okay, here we go again, I already heard that. Once you realize what words are used in the scripture, in the Torah, they're not that many. I mean, there's only 22 letters. And if you know the letters, you can compose all the words. It's a really small set. And what that does is validates 
the truth of the message repeatedly. And the word lamed isn't just teach and learn, it means to repeat. So here we're going to go through this kind of quickly. Ranano, Ranan, Resh Nun Nun. Well, Resh Nun is a ringing cry, a shout of joy. So Resh Nun Nun, you take the second letter, you double, you make it the third, or you put yods and vavs in between. And it's all the same thing. Loud praise, rejoicing, ringing cry, cry, shout for joy. Zadikim, well, the Zadik means the righteous ones. But it's also, Zadik is also victory, deliverance, salvation, and justice. So you could say the, the shout for joy, justice, victory for the righteous ones, by Yahweh, in the condition of Yod Vave. What's the condition of Yod Vave? We just talked about it in Deuteronomy 5, 29 to 30. Guarding what he said, doing as he commanded with a heart to be his people. Because that's the definition of righteousness. Righteousness is not just good, good stuff. What's good? Tov, functional, alive, chayon, chayim. Living functionally, righteously, is where the victory is. And if you have a heart for that, rejoice! It's the ultimate! La Yasharim, straight right, accurate. It, it is the it. Lamed belonging to Yashar, Sharim, songs. And then Nun Alephav He. Well, Alephav He means desired. Nun Alephav He. Well, Nun Aleph He means decorated, beautified, adorned, take pleasure in. Nun Aleph Av Hey, comely, befitting, beautiful. Nun Aleph Mem, like Nam Yahweh. It means utterance, utterance, speak, declaration. But Nun Aleph Vav is his habitation. He dwells in the beauty of the righteous ones rejoicing. The last word, Tav He Lamed He. Well, He Lamed is where you get the word hallelujah, radiant, brilliant, tov he lamed he in the dictionary means fame, renown, glory, but it also means error, profane, folly, and sin. But it's the root of the word tehillim, which is simply psalm, like psalms 33, tehillah 33. Fame and renown, error, profanity, sin, folly. Well, which is it? It's both. As we've talked before, it seems like each letter, each word, every one, every time, depending on how much you think about it, you can see this side and that side. So the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Ra and Tov, is it possible that in everything he said, you can see something which is counter. How do you then make sure you're not being bamboozled? It's got to be righteous and not harm, calamity, wicked. That's Resh Ayan to your friend and companion. That, that's Resh Ayan. But if he inhabits taking pleasure in Nun Aleph Mem, his utterance of radiant brilliance, of his fame and renown. Well, he's the guy that gave instructions. <laughs> he's all about his instructions. You take away his instructions, he ain't there. He doesn't inhabit those praises. You take away his uh, Zadi Vav of his Nun Aleph Mem, the praise of that God is vacant. It's not the face of Yod Hey Vav Hey, even though it might be beautiful songs. <clears throat> Verse two: Hodu la Yawawa, bekanor ben Nabal, kanor. That's harp. Nabal, Ashur. The word Ashur, Ash, Ayin Shin Resh is the number ten, 
or a group of 10, it means to enrich or make wealthy, a group of 10, which is the word for minion, which is the mem noon, min, yod vav noon, many own, min, which is a group of 10 people. So the Jews have this concept that if you don't have 10 men, don't even, don't even have a congregation trying to pray because you have to have 10 masculine male figures praying in order to have a voice. That's a minion, a legal quorum minimum. Is that true? That's in their protocol. And it, was it scriptural or not, not? I don't know. But the word I share like 10 commandments, 10 Deborim, I see Resh. So here's a group of 10 of Nabal. Well, Nabal, you look it up and it means harp, but it's also foolish, senseless, ignoble, impious, disgraceful, shameless. That's like the big hair rock and rollers of the 1980s, you know, the guys in spandex and, well, it's a show, but it, it, what? Translated 10 string harp. Then the word Zimro Lo is sing his Lamed Vav to his, of his, belonging to him. Sing of what belongs to him, the word Zimmer. So Bob Dylan, from what I understand, his name was Bob Zimmer man. Well, Zimmer is the word for singer. He became a singer of some renown, but the word Zimmer also means an arborist. Well, an arborist, one who trims trees, gives shapes to trees. The word for tree is Ayanzadi, but the word Ayanzadi or Ayanzadi hey means to take counsel. Just to play on words, a Zimmer is one who sings or shapes trees. And the same word for tree is to take counsel. So a singer who was putting to music the counsel, the advice of Yahuwah to sing on a 10 string harp, even if it looks like you're disgraceful, shameless, singing exuberant Hodu La Yua. What's Hodu? giving praise, thanks, echoing, resounding, praise and confession of sin. In other words, to say, listen, we've, we've blown it. We wandered away. We, didn't, we were told we didn't have to do your stuff. Whether it's our fault or not, it's not our fault. But even if it was, yeah, we didn't want to do your stuff anyway. Please forgive us. Please, please teach us the ways of life. Please give us the truth. We'll do whatever you say. You, you, you want us to blow a shofar on Yom Teruah? Okay. You want us to sit down on Shabbat? Okay. You want us to not eat bacon anymore and sausage? and No shrimp on the barbie. Down. Okay. Gosh. What else? Justice and kindness? No way, man. Gosh. He doesn't deserve justice and kindness. Oh, that's me I'm pointing at. It's all mirror. Ooh, gosh. Whatever he says. Verse three. Shiro lo. Sing of his to his sheer song. Chadesh. New song. Renovated. Chadesh like the Rosh Chadesh. Chet Dalit Sheen here. It's not Kuf Dalit Sheen. It's Chet, which means new or renew or revamp or renovate. Ha Yativo. Well, the Tet Yod Bet is like Tet Vav Bet. Tet Vav Bet, good, welfare, functional, but Tet Yod Bet, it says in the dictionary, means quality, character, and nature. Well, so by looking at the other spelling of the words with different prefixes and suffixes, or yods and vavs in between, you get a different regard. Tov is not just good, but it's quality or character or nature. Well, the natural character of Esau and the, which affected the relationship between him and Yahuwah was Aleph Yod Bet. The character of Yaakov was to get from Yahuwah Aleph Hey Bet. So Yaakov said, give me, I need from you, I want you to be my Elohim. And remember, he put some conditions. He says, if you bring me back here and you bring me favor and you <laughs> what? Then all you, the Elohim of my forefathers, then I will, you know, and it's like, gosh, just be my Elohim, would you? 
But Esau was like, I got this. Esau was the manly man, the hairy man, the, the man who was the great hunter. They say that the book of Jasher, I believe, says that Esau had killed Nimrod, who was the, the great giant, possibly even referred to as Gilgamesh. And uh, Esau says, you know, basically, I, I could do this on my own. And Jacob says, no, I need, I need your help. That's the distinctive difference between Aleph Yodbet, apparently, and Aleph Haybet. But see, you have to look at these words that kind of kick the stuff around. So this verse three, sing this new song of quality and character. And then the word is noon, gimel, noon. Well, mem, gimel, noon is shield. Gimel, noon is garden. So engaging the garden, but noon, gimel, nug, nug, like nuggy. Or you, it's like, what? Nuggy. It's translated, compo compose music, nagan. Noon gimel hey means to shine, revise, or to correct, to polish. Well, how do you polish something? Basically, you put some polishing compound on a rag and you sit there and you take a guitar. It almost like you're, so it's the idea of rubbing something like that to polish, to shine. How do you give somebody noogie? You get them in a headlock and on their head. So I, I'm just trying to show you English words that you think, hey, how, why would you even talk about that? It's just to get it stuck in your head. The last word here is bet, tov, resh, vav, ayin, hey. Ba, tarua. Tarua? Hey, that's like Yom Tarua. On our calendar, it was just Yom Tarua a couple days ago, just so you know. On, um, Thursday. So that's the beginning of the autumn Moedim. Other people are coming up within a couple weeks, just so you know. But this says Betarua as the action of, well, what's Terua? Shouting. Well, that's like Ronan, the very first word in the first verse. Sing unto him or sing of his stuff, this new song of his character and nature. like being in the garden of shouting, play an instrument of Tarua. Should you do that on Yom Tarua? Should you do that anytime? Just for what it's worth. <laughs> A shout, a Tarua. But resh vav ayin, well, that's like resh ayin is evil and harm. And it's like harder than the ears. Well, however, noise, shout, to think. Verse four, ki yashar, because now this word ki means because or in which case, therefore, ki is this connecting vav like word, which is taking a pre statement and launching it for the sake of this shining, revising, well, that's like correcting the meaning of the words. Chadesh, to revamp or renovate, we're renovating our mind with rejoicing on Yom Teruah, which is not a Christian thing to do, nor is it necessarily a Jewish thing to do, to allow the infidels in to yell. Uh, uh, when, they, when, when they have this, the established authority, it's like, forget all that. Ki Yashar, Dabar Yahwa, Yashar like Ashar, straight right, but Sheen Resh is prince, poet, singer, like Sheen Resh, hey, Sarah, as a prince with responsibility over some sort of bailiwick of uh, jurisdiction, poet, singer, the purpose of singing, see the word Dabar Yahweh, at the word of Yahweh, but Dabar also is a word matter thing, a stipulation. It's a raft following. It's like a pasture or plague. That which follows, similar to the word Yaakov, that which is following, like the wake of a ship. So pulling a barge of blessing or cursing. They call Ma'asha, and every Mem, Ayin, Shin, Hey, every thing that he said to do or everything that he does bet aleph mem vav nun hey 
Okay, so this last word, if you look at the construct of the sentence, this last word is everything. It's amuna. Well, amuna is the word faith or amen, so be it. But it's not just faith. Bet means in the condition of, in, on, with, among, through, bet, aleph, mem, vav, nun, hey. Well, aleph, mem is the word if. Bet, aleph means to arrive. Everything accomplished according to the word of Yahweh, according to stipulations, are straight and authentic arriving if faithful, but mem vav nun, like mem yod nun, like the word benjamin, like the word that means to count, to categorize, right hand, mem vav nun here, like mini mini tikal of farsi, mem nun there means weigh or count. If you look at aleph mem vav nun, in the dictionary, it means trained, educated, craftsman, artisan, confidence and fidelity. You remember said Adam, Abraham had a Muna. He was told count the stars. Nobody can count them, but he had faith. He believed. He did do something. I think because the word Sefer means to connect the dots and they did design the constellations or he put a story to the constellations or he connected everything together and had the whole thing make sense. He didn't just believe, he did what he was told. Now, the interesting thing about Psalms 33, though you won't see any big deal made out of it. Like if you look at Psalms 34, the first letter of the first word in each verse is another letter of the alphabet. But here in Psalms 33, there happens to be 22 letters. Gee, does that line up with the alphabet sequence? Maybe we could look at that. But this is verse four, so that's a Dalit. And it says, Ki yashar debar Yahweh, they call Masha. This, there's a, something straight about what Yahweh built and what he said and what's what's coming later, the raft carrying baggage, and it's all because doing, so this is the door. It's like, well, that, that's interesting. It might might have something to do with the Dalit. Because mem vav nun ke also can mean the numerator, the, the setting the pace. Because out of mem jumps noon. So bet aleph mem vav noon hey, I could read that as from the heart of not only being faithful, but believing, but being trained, educated, and with fidelity, doing what he said. Faithfulness. He can trust us to do what he said. Going back to Deuteronomy 529, guarding to do what he commanded. That's Amuna. Believing what he said, so you guard it to do it. That's faith, not just believing in some doctrine. That's the door. That's the door that Yahweh built and established into the universe that allows him to step in and give the manifest of his love to the sons of Jacob, Israel. And then, hey, to, re, to express or reveal something, verse 5, Aleph, hey, bet, give. Aleph, I will, hey, bet, give. Aleph, hey, bet, love. Zadika, victory, deliverance, righteousness, salvation. Ve, mishvat. Well, mishvat is not just justice, but it's the balancing of scales. Because he said, look at his whole thing, why did he build the universe? Why does the world exist? Because he wanted, he's so about righteousness and justice that he, that he, this is the way I can assess this, that he created this world to be filled with evil, wicked, mean, and nasty, and liars and thieves and murderers. But his eyes look over the world to find somebody who has a heart for righteousness walk in his commands so that he can pour out the balanced scales of justice, of goodness and life and chesed, mercy and kindness on that one. Ahav zadika ve mishfat chesed Yahweh melo haaretz. Mem lamed alafhei. 
accomplish for confirm complete Aleph Vav Hey desired noon Aleph Hey beautified take pleasure in the earth Hey Aleph Resh Zadi Hey is Hey Aleph is here the but Resh Zadi means to run with volitional pleasure. So for Yahuwah to find those who will run volitionally with righteousness, doing what he commanded just because he commanded. Tell me what to do and let me run to do it. <laughs> Years ago, I was working on a job, a bunch of Spanish guys working for me, you know, South, Central American guys. Anyway, I asked this one kind of younger new guy, hey, would you go get me a two by six? Yes. And he was out there. I later found out he, he had no idea what a two by six was. He asked the maid working at the house, what's a two by six? <laughs> yes, I'll do whatever you ask. You know, I wanted to show himself gung-ho useful. He asked the maid, what's a two by six? <laughs> Yahweh is looking He's looking for the excuse to pour out chesed as mishfat to the zadikim, as an expression of his ahav. That's verse five. Look at this. That's the hay of verse five. Verse six. Bedabar Yahweh shemayim naasho beruach peyo kol zevam. At the word or with stipulation, but hadabar means subduing or destruction. But this is bet debar. At the word of Yahweh, the heavens were made, is what it says. But heavens, sheen mem yod mem. Sheen means belonging to water. What's water? Unstable, chaotic, it seeks its own level, but it telegraphs microscopic noise. That's why some people think the world's flat because the water is absolutely stable, and yet the globe model is that we're spinning and we're shooting through the air on this spiral and the galaxies and everything. I don't know. The point is, Nun Ayin Shin Vav is made, produced his positive command, acted, yielded, accomplished, fitting, suitable, and of the Ruach of his mouth, the breath of his mouth, all Zadi Bet Aleph Mem. Well, that's the word, remember we said in Genesis 2, verse 1, that the heavens and all their array had been completed in the six days. Then he then he rested. The, the, the heavens and all their array. Well, this word Zadi Bet Aleph is array, but it's also Yahweh's a vote. Zadi Bet Aleph Vav Tav. Army, host, legion. Space aliens? Angels? <laughs> various creatures? Zadi bet aleph bam. Bet aleph means to arrive. The zadi is like this flourish, this banner. They arrive with banners. I could read zadi bet aleph mem as Isaiah 13. My proudly exulting ones, exuberant over my grandeur, are just coming to take care of business. The business that Yahweh sent them on, which is to consume, remove, or just to Eliminate the sinners from the earth. What's a sinner? We're all poor sinners. No, if we walk in his ways of righteousness as he commanded, shamaring to Asha, his Zava, we're not in the category of sinners. A sinner is one not doing that. At the word of Yahweh, the heavens respond to his breath to accomplish the expanse with banners flying, pouring out the Zadi Bet Aleph, Aleph Mem, if, on the condition of, on the condition of. Just trying to show you a different way to read these things. Okay, next next one, uh, verse seven. Kaf Nun Samik, like Nun Samik is a banner. Nun Samik is a miracle, a way of escape. But the word kanas, like the word kneset, means to go in or to go in or enter or collect. That's like the Knesset is the Congress in Israel. It means to bring home. Kaf nun dalit. Well, like is the prefix letter kaf and nun dalit, nod. Like Cain went to the land of nod, like you go sleep and you nod off and you go wandering off into dreamland. 
like Nod, like wandering. Well, that's a vagabond. Bringing home a vagabond who the water, Hayim. Well, if you look in the dictionary, Yod Mem is not just water, but it's the Mediterranean Sea, which is to the west. So Yom is just the direction of the sea, which is the west. Natan is the next word to be teaching or to give, Tav Nun, or it's actually the word for jackal or the teeth, biting. So you could say, well, the word Shin Nun is also teeth, but also Shana means different or variant. So I could say, like bringing home the wandering vagabond who has learned the teachings from the West. Hey, that's me. Be aretzot in the Aleph Etzarot, in the Aleph Zadi Resh. Well, that means to store, collect, accumulate. Etzor Aleph Zadi Vavresh, hidden latent treasuries. That's like the Azor Islands. In the middle of the Atlantic, you're on a ship and all of a sudden you bump into this island with food and water and shelter. And it's like, whoa, boy, where did this come from? Tehom is the word deep. Tav, hevav, membav, top. So it's it, the treasuries of the deep. Tav, hevav, mem, a deep abyss. Hevav, mem means agitated, discomfited, or noisy. Tehom, oat. Well, what come, Mike comes to my mind is that the waters of the West, Tehom, a deep abyss. That's like the, you ever read the book Fossilized Customs? Where do we get the names of the days of the week? Where do we get the, the holidays and festivals and the cultural things that we just pick up over the centuries? All those things that are not Yahuwahs. See, the word Kadem, meaning each, like Mikdem, that, that band, means east where the sun rises and it means ancient the ancient path the ancient path the paleo derrick that's kadem so the, the antithesis of that is the west where things permutated and morphed and turned into as they got polluted with other cultures so uh, see knowing that i can read this verse seven and yet that the, the number seven is the zion which is the weapon which is cut off and it's like those who were banished in exile, cut off from the land, cut off from his favor, went west, learning the fossilized customs of heathen, perversion, distortion, vulgar profanities, thinking they were holy doctrine. And by lifting up this banner, this noon psalmic, as to grab their attention, to bring them home, to the treasury of what's been hidden in Yahuwah's Torah. Then verse eight, which is this fence, this kingdom, Vayirao, fear Ma Yahweh, at the place of Yahweh or away from Kal Haaretz, all the earth, Mamenu, and at our place or away from us, Yo Yagor, Igor, literally Igor, Yod Kimmel Bav Resh, like the, the, the sidekick to the mad scientist is always named Igor, which is, <laughs> it's scary. Well, that's what it means. It means fearing, afraid, Igor. Call Yeshivi Tabal. So Yod Shin Bet Yod, Yeshivi means Shin Bet. Well, that's like Shabbat. That means to return, repent. But it also means to rebel and turn away. It's similar to Psalmic Resh. Do you return to rebuild, to sit back down, or do you turn away in rebellion with an attitude? The word tabal, you look in the dictionary, it means the word for world, but it also means to spice or add seasoning or relish, which is a confusion of the natural order. Well, if you add stuff to Yahweh's words, if you spice it up a little bit, you've just polluted it. But the natural order, like with Esau, Aleph, Yod, Bet, is, hey, leave me alone. I got this. We want Yahuwah to spice up our natural, otherwise left to our own devices situation. So how do we get his attention? By walking in his ways and doing what he said. In fact, there's, I forget where it is, but there's another verse where, where Yahweh says, 
I'm so disgusted with my people, kick them out of the land, turn my back on them, call them their enemies. I don't want to hear another word from them. And I don't care if I hear them yelling and screaming. I'm not going to listen. I won't listen. I can't listen because they won't listen to me. But when they start listening to me, when they listen to me and walk in my ways, then when I hear their voice cry out because of their enemies oppressing them, my heart can't take it. And he turns with favor. If we listen to his voice and change our behavior to do what he says, it pulls him back from even being Ebert cross over into furious wrath of disgust and not caring and not wanting to give us a regard just to listen to his voice and do what he said pulls his attention back and breaks his heart for us instead of us breaking his heart against us. The word fear, yara, is a reverential regard. But similarly, resh aleph vav, resh aleph hey in the dictionary means to see, to perceive, to put, to, to put on exhibition or to he allowed himself to be seen. So he who has turned his face away from Israel, his heritage, his people, because of their disgusting, lying, stealing, and killing. Maui comes to mind. It's another matter. Instead of regarding the sins, the travesty of his people who continually lie, steal, and kill, when we See what he puts on exhibition of his tet yod bet, his true goodness, character, nature. Who is he? What does he want? What does he command us? What does he demand for us to be his people with his smiling face shining upon us? We can't just quote the ironic benediction and expect it's it's a like magic words that make it happen. It doesn't work that way. We need to do what he said. Verse nine, the tet, like this insignia, this stamp, this seal of Nam Yahweh, ki hua, amer vayahi, because he declares it and it exists, hua, he, it, Zadi Vav Hey commands Vav Yod Ayin Mem Dalit, Ahmad, stand, establish, fixed place. Whatever he said is what it is. It exists. Vav Yod Hey Yod. Any word spelled with Yod's, Hey's, and Vav's means to exist. It just is. The same thing he declared is exactly what it is. He commanded it, and it's so. So for somebody or anybody to say, Again, the right hand or the left. Yeah, but we have a different doctrine. Oh, yes, but the saints told us. Oh, yes, but the Holy Spirit has led me. Doesn't count. Doesn't matter. Out of bounds. The signia is his signature of Aleph Tav. He said it. That's what it is. Question is, what did he say? That's why we're trying to learn the language. Verse 10. Yahweh ha pir. Hey, pay yod resh. Well, pay vav resh is where we get the word pure or puree, which is fruit, fruitful. It's a wine press. Peyodresh is a pit, hole, or a ditch. A pit, like a wine press, you throw the grapes in and you stomp them. That's where you get the word fruition. But pevavresh means to annul or frustrate. Then ayanzadi tov. Well, hey, ayanzadi, that's the word for tree, like the word arborist who gives shape to tree. It's also the word zimmer for singing. That's why I'm mentioning these things are all related. And then goyim. So you could say, well, the word ayin zadi tav is counsel, but it also means closed eyes or open eyes. And goyim, well, that's nations. But remember, haga means to navigate 
ponder, meditate, rudder helm steering wheel into spell words phonetically. So to study the language or to be born into a certain language of the nations, there's a pit of a wine press of his wrath that to have closed eyes or to take the counsel of various nations will make you fall into the pit and get the wrath of his, the wine of the wrath of his vengeance. I mean, I'm, I'm bringing in these other comments from other books. And then it says, hey, noon yod, when I books, Isaiah, Jeremiah, these various other prophets. Anyway, it says, hey, noon yod aleph. Well, noon yod aleph is like that word that we were looking at that meant beautified, enjoyment, took pleasure in. Hey, noon yod means these, mem chet shin bet. Vav tov, bet vav is plural, mem is the place of het shin bet. You look up that word, it means to think, devise, plan, regard, consider, calculate, imagine, esteem, count, value, attach importance to, band and girdle. So when Yeshua in the book of Revelation has that gold band around his chest, it's this word, it's it's sign language, it, it's this word, het shin bet. Ingenious work, device, invention, arithmetic, sum up, figure out. So these figure out, Ayin Mem Yod Mem, peoples included, included or excluded. Ayin Mem is, that's the letter Yod. So it has something to do with, there's a pit of counsel where they, if the, if the Goyim take pleasure in their own counsel, they'll fall into this pit of his wrath. But even if the Goyim say, and let's figure out the truth and let's let's see what he really built. How does this place work? It's arithmetic. It's it's like chemistry. It's physics. It's nuts and bolts. Yahweh built the universe a certain way. And if we join in league with what he built, it'll open our eyes for fruition, for success. Pretty simple. And that's the Yod, like Popeye's arm, like the excavator arm. He That's the way he built it. 11th verse, Kaf. Atzat Yahweh, the council of Yahweh, Leolam, forever. Tav Ayin Mem Delet, stand, establish, fixed place. So what it's saying here is the council of Yahweh, what he built, just is. It can't change. It won't change. He won't change it. It's solid. So if we looking through these letters, these words are trying to determine what did he say, which is the Yashar absolute truth. Forget the translation into some other language. It's finding the reality, the concrete being of every word is where the truth is and the universe is built, structured on it accordingly. And then the same word again, machashavot, mem chetshin bet vav tov, the same word we just looked at, lavo, his heart, lador, lador. Generation after generation, his heart is established on this thing he invented. Period. Done. We, there's no other place to look for this stuff other than right here in his words. Verse 12, and that's this open hand, 12 is the... Twelfth letter is Lamed, which it means to teach and learn and authority. Ashri, blessed, praiseworthy, straight, authentic. It's it's Asher. Ash, Asher is that like Yeshar, like we said, who that which, straight, right, valid. Ashri is translated as blessed, praiseworthy, happy. Psalm one. Ashri Ha'ish, blessed is the man. Ha Goy, the nation, the one who navigates, meditates. Asher Yahweh, who that which Yahweh. El Hio, his Elohim, whoever says, I choose life and I choose to say Yahuwah Elohi. Blessing, praiseworthy, success. You got it. Just to come to the terms in your own life where you will finally resign to say Yahweh Elohi. You could say that's the beginning of everything. That is everything, but everything branches from that, like a tree sprouting from a seed. 
the people, ha'am, bachar, bachardi, I choose, I select, I select the best, la nachala lo, la midvav, as his for him belonging to him, but nun, lamid, nun het lamid, well, het lamid, to wait, hope, or expect. Chala, to take as a possession, torrent, produce a swarm of bees. Nun chetlamid, to inherit. Those who choose to be his heritage, those who say, I want to be what he said is the only thing that matters. So when he said that Israel is his heritage, I can choose to be Israel by simply saying Yahweh el he and walking in his ways and doing what he said and trying to figure out what that means. And if he says, blow a trumpet on the first day of the seventh month, then that's what I do. If he says, eat unleavened bread for a week in the spring, I figure out the calendar of when that is. And even if somebody else disagrees, I try to calculate and you better go for it. Even if you got the wrong calendar, figure it out better next month, next year. But just do what he said, eat unleavened bread for a month. How hard is that? If he says, quit eating bacon and shellfish, Catfish, sturgeon, doesn't have fins and scales, don't eat. Okay, okay, I won't eat it. What's the big deal? You want to be his people? You want to live or not? Those who choose, even a goy, even a, an, an infidel, who chooses to be Yahweh's people and walk in his ways by navigating the spelling of words. Gee. That's what we're doing. Imagine that. Verse 13, letter Mem. Ha Shemayim He Beat Habit. Habit, habitat. That's like habitat. So the heavens are the habitat of Yahweh, Resh Aleph He, seeing on exhibition. But He Bet Yotet also means uh, He Bet Tet He, looking at. He Bet Tet Aleph He means utterance or pronouncing. So you could say from the heavens, he sees Aleph Tov Kal Ben Neha Adam. He sees all the sons of the Adam from the heavens. That's his habitat. But Habet also means utterance and, and pronouncing. So for him to see just the act of seeing, but it also means to perceive, to understand, to have everything make sense. So even though Resh Aleph He might mean to perceive and understand, well, the word bean that yod nun means to understand. It's also the construct to build construction, bet nun hey, where we get the word bone, the skeleton of, at the skeletal foundation of everything, from the heavens, Besh Shemayim, but Shem is name, fame, renown, reputation. That's like the meanings of the letters. That's the meaning of the utterance because the habet also means utterance and pronouncing. So it's like the, the pronouncing of the letters of everything he said is the skeleton. Well, that, that's like going to an anthropological museum. Dinosaur bones, mastodons and saber-toothed tigers and Tyrannosaurus rexes. <laughs> looking at the spelling of words or looking at these things that we have no regard for. They've been lost, they've been forsaken, but they're the actual bones of the Zavot, the, 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 these five minutes, gosh, we better hurry. Anyway, uh, verse 14, noon, the life, mem mem kafav noon, ma ma kon, well kon kafav noon, where you get kaf noon, yes, yes I can, it's to regulate, to turn a hi-fi tuner, Register, establish, constitute, secure, correct. Makon would be the fabric of the universe. It means engine, device, a trick, automatic machine, base or stand. Shabbat, his Shabbat. Wait a minute. Noon is the active letter. How do you bring the bones of the dinosaurs to life? His Shabbat is an automatic machine. Hey, Sheen, Gimel, Yod, Chet. Look at, gaze at, mindful of, care for, El call Yeshivi Haaretz. El, the eye in the sky. Whoever on the face of the earth will sit down on Shabbat has his eye attending to them. 
whoever will sit down on Shabbat, like he said, it's an automatic machine. How do you return his attention? Sit down on Shabbat. Why do you think they changed the day? Wow. Verse 14 of Psalm 33, Shabbat is an automatic trigger. Pull the trigger and the gun explodes. Pull the trigger and on Shabbat, it's an automatic. Verse 15. The Yitzar, the form, the fashion, the manufacturer, that he, he devised a uniting of their hearts, they who will understand ha mabin toward all they do, lining up with the psalmic, the engineered structure. Once you get it, do what you're doing on purpose because it's it's what he did. That's the uniting of the hearts of his people. Let's do what he said because that's the way it works. It's the truth. Forget your doctrine. It's not about arguing doctrine. What did he say and what did he mean? What's the truth? Verse 10, there ain't a king able to save by multiplying military champions. Men of war will not be a, a efficiency utilizing an escape even if you multiply their, their vigor, even if you've got AI soldiers, that's not where there's salvation and success. Verse 17, and you could say that's the letter 16, the letter I in the scales. It's like, where's the, where's the success? How do you put it in? It's like, do righteousness and just, justice and kindness and mercy and truth, and he will grant you success. He will make success happen. Verse 17, sucker. That means to be lied, to fabricate the horse for salvation. Anybody who thinks that you, if you have a bigger military, you're going to win, doesn't work that way. And multiplying military chayil is no escape. Verse 70, verse 18. Hana ayin Yahweh. Behold here gladly is the eyes of Yahweh toward Yirao. He who fears him, lamed mem yod chet lamed. Waiting and expecting, yod chet lamed. Yichalam for his hesed. Yod het lamed, common, popular, vulgar, profane. We talked about that word like het lamed lamed, punched holes in. The point is het lamed, the reason I talked about fishing, we're almost done here, here. Uh, lamed hey zadi yod lamed, the efficiency away from death, mamamot, nefasham, their soul life essence, ve la chayotam, Away from death to fresh, moist, new, vigorous, lamed, chet, yod, life, be, when resh, I and bet. Hunger, famine, scarcity, starving. In the middle of a famine, he will give life. Those who walk in his ways. Resh, and that has to do with identity, nefash, nefesh, new. Chet kof tav hey, chet kof to fish with a hook. What bait would you put if you're trying to catch Yahweh's attention? Wait, hope, expect. To expect Yahuwah to do what he said. That's the bait. To expect that when Yahweh said, my people, though I have turned away from you in anger because you're ancestors because of your own self because of the 2730 year curse when you listen to my voice and walk in my ways i will be quick to turn and remove your enemies and pour out my love and compassion upon you to believe that as a stable given that just is that's the truth that confidence in his character nature identity because he said so, because that's his Aleph Tov, is it. That's the bait you put on the hook. Confidence in the character as his word describes. Help and Megan, our shield, the same. Verse 21. So in him, Sameach, rejoice. 
lavenu, our heart, because in the Shem of his Kadosh is the place of our confidence, trust, secure, injured, assured. And that word, betok, to wait, to expect, to be at ease with tranquility. To be at ease with tranquility, no matter what the world economic forum, no matter what the Illuminati, the military, out of time. Last verse, 22, Yehi, his hesed, your hesed, Yahweh, upon us, raise us up to a higher dignity, ka'asher, just like we hoped you would. That's the tov. The Aleph tov is, he said so, we expect it, it's going to happen. Yeah, but what if it doesn't? Don't even ask that. Th don't even ask that question. Don't even have that thought. He said it. We're done. There you go. Okay, Fred. we're done. Okay, okay. <clears throat> thank you, Father, thank for, you, Father, for. Sorry for the echo. For the chance to get together again, bless everyone on this call and uh, and the after show show. In whose name I pray. Amen. Amen.